Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Clay from Merlin's Vault. I'm here to paint a very cool miniature by Steamforge Games. I'm going to actually show you how to paint some flesh tones, since that is like in the deepest recess of the bottle. I'm going to use a combination of paints here, all by scale 75, starting with Sunset Purple and Indian Shadow. And then I'm gonna move up in tones from darkest to lightest. And I'm going to use uh, pink flesh here. Moving on to basic flesh. And then maybe even to highlight some of the areas with golden flesh or golden skin, my bad. So let's go get started here. I'm gonna use a very light touch of Indian shadow. And I'm actually going to mix in a little bit of that sunset purple with it as well. I like more dynamic colors and flesh tones. So I'm going to go ahead and mix this together so it's got a nice fleshy, uh, watery base to it. Because I don't want to go too thick with, with the paint. I want to paint many layers on the flesh tone. I'm just going for the deepest pockets in the model itself. So don't worry if you get a little bit messy, that's why we're going very light with the coloring here. Just painting on the hand here. I know many painters often struggle with painting flesh, but I assure you if you do like a, a heavy ratio of water or a contrast medium and your paint, you're going to get some really good results. And even if you need a couple more layers, it's often better to add more material than to put too much material on and not have room left over for some of your more dynamic colors here. And this is often how I do a lot of different flesh tones. Flesh tones for D and D, there's a lot of different races in D and D, and a lot of different techniques that we could do for different character models. Uh, one of my favorites of all time is a dwarf because there's just so many kinds of dwarves out there, all from subterranean dwarves to dwarves maybe in different realms or realities, depending on like what you're playing. Um, I like uh, dwarves that are uh, subterranean or the Duergar as they're called because I like going from more of like obsidian style of uh, colors and clothing and armors. I just think their, their whole um, look is very interesting to me. And it's something that I've seen in a lot of video games like in Hearthstone, there's like a just one dwarf, you can have so many different possibilities. And it really comes from what part of the world that they're in and uh, who, what their backstory is. And maybe if they're a blacksmith, you can actually employ more of like a, like a dirtier look to the, the model to see that, oh, this is his way of life. This is him making a living. So, perfect. And I'm just going to make sure that the paint is not pulled up in too many areas. I just want it like a real thin coat to it. And while this is still wet on the model, scale 75 has a really good tendency to stay wet for a couple minutes. So no rush, but this is going to be the perfect chance to blend some of those colors. So I'm just going to move right on to my mixture here. And then I'm going to slowly introduce more of our skin tone here with pink flesh. Now you could do this with a lot of other Citadel paints if you have more of a Citadel collection of paints by Games Workshop. Uh, Kislev Fet Flesh is essentially my pink flesh or basic flesh here. And once you have a couple of paints, you can do a lot of mixing and experimenting with those paints as you go along here. 
All right. Now I'm just introducing that to the model, leaving just a, the darkest, um, deepest re recesses with our original tone here. So as you see, the model has their chin kind of tucked into their coat. So I really don't have to go that deep into the, the coat. I just have to focus on the, the forehead and some of the other the places here. And just doing a little bit of wet blending here. Just checking, I've seen it might be just all hair, but I'm making sure I'm catching all the ears and other places of the head. Perfect. Just getting some of the knuckles and everything under here. And as we go along, you'll see me uh, spend less time on the under part of the model because I want more of that dynamic lighting and to have some of those parts that are sticking out. It's almost like an optical illusion because you're not paying it as much attention to the underside of the model because it is naturally darker. You're looking at some of those highlights I employed on the model. And you can see that I'm just doing a very uh, quick job of putting those colors on the model itself. Because really, you're just going for the highlighted features, the cheekbones, the nose, the ears, the knuckles, everything there. And as you're blending those colors, you'll notice that if you wet the brush and move it between those colors, it's gonna get a much better blend. Okay. Slowly getting more color there. Which is great. Got it on the cheeks here. And I'm actually going to have it a little bit brighter to, towards the right side of the model. And that's because there's like this really neat fire effect in the, the left hand of the model. And I'm going to use that to introduce some color and life into the model. You don't always have to do this. You can focus on just like the actual color and, and details to your own wants or needs for the, the miniature, but I'm actually gonna have it a little bit brighter because that light is naturally flashing kind of from right to left or wherever the base of the flame is. If you're playing a lot of D&D, &D, characters are going to set things on fire naturally or they're gonna have some cool ice effects. So you could put like a lot of those different little effects on the model and it really takes a on a new shape so if it was ice, I could probably put more of these pinkish, purpley uh, kind of undertones to the model. So it maybe looks like it spends a lot of time in the cold. So that's why their skin is getting more naturally um, it just has a more of like a frostbite kind of look to it where the, the cheeks and the hands get more pink as you go along. So now I'm being a little bit more careful. I'm actually going through and just getting the knuckle there and the top of the thumb. And this is, at this point, is pretty much pure pink flesh that I'm introducing to the model. And you'll see as I go along, I'm probably going to be paying less attention to the cheekbones than previous layers, if that makes sense to everybody. And I'm really going with the same brush. I have no real need to go detail heavy at this point. And that's because I'm just getting more of those tones of 
dark to brighter to brightest. And layer by layer, it starts to look like it's coming to life. As you can see with those tones right now, it's looking kind of sherbet, which is great. And as you look at the model, uh, for the eyes, I actually have this really nice glowing effect that I'm gonna do from Tesseract Glow by Citadel. It has a really unnatural green flare look and the flame going to be green as well. So I'm going to play around with the reactionary, the eyes and the flame skull that's shooting from the hand. It's gonna look really neat. This character is supposed to be more of like a warlock kind of character. Someone that practices the darker aspects of magic conjuration and maybe even made a, a pact while they're in wizarding school. Something that can give them kind of more of a flair or an edge over the other students. So I really play that up into the character itself. And I like to tell a story as I'm going through painting layer after layer. So I'm gonna go right there, right there. And even if you make a mistake, kind of coming up a little too high for me right there. You have another brush and you want to wet blend it into those areas that you were aiming for originally. And don't worry about making it perfect because we're going to go even brighter areas. We're going to make it even brighter. So even if it doesn't look perfect right now, I'm really going to push those colors around. And my hands do seem to jump around, so apologies in a f for right now. I'm still getting practice at filming these. I move around like crazy. But I promise they're only going to get better from here. Not going to shake around too, too much. All right, just a little bit over the ear. I want that transition of colors to look more natural. I don't want to just start poking out all the details as of right now. It's kind of like when you're using an airbrush and you're just aiming for the, the high spots and shooting it at the right angle. You're not so much trying to hit every little detail. You're more so just trying to hit the where the light uh, would project the most tr transition of color. I don't even know if that's the technical term, but hopefully I'm, I'm making a little bit of sense. You just want for right here, see how I'm going a little bit more towards the knuckle. So the base of the hand right under that sleeve or the little bracelet that that this character has, not hitting that as much. And same thing with the, the knuckles themselves. Perfect. And all these little messier areas are gonna get cleaned up when I'm starting to focus more on the, the skull itself. Okay, and now, as I'm going, I'm working through this, I've got more of a basic flesh tone, and I'm slowly introducing a new color, which is Tanir Yellow. It's this very bright, contrast yellow. And normally, if I was going with a lighter color, I would suggest going with like an off-white to add, slowly add to your color palette 
but this yellow kind of makes the skin look more golden. Definitely a, a, a lighter color to introduce onto the skin tone here. And again, I'm using more of just like a half and half ratio of water or contrast medium. In my instance, I'm just using plain water right now to get these colors uh, to not look too globbed on. They're more just natural. And they'll look a certain way when you apply the color and they'll look more natural as soon as they dry. And again, if you make a mistake, just have your other brush ready to move it into the spot that you want it. And even if we have all these colors, we could still add and fix some of the places where it transitioned a little bit too quickly and we can add some of those darker colors back in, but we gotta do it pretty carefully. I've actually done that with uh, some darker tone of skin. And I've really been practicing on colors, like all the different little colors that you see in skin tone. And there really is a big variety, like I've, I can use a transition of like orange or purple all the way up into your most brightest part of the skin. If I sound a little crazy, I got my other paintbrush in my mouth here. There we are. And it really helps when you're, you're considering and looking at other tutorials online too, to kind of shape and influence your colors, but it should come, start to come naturally to you. So when I pick these colors out for today, it's more so just trial and error. And some of the best models to start I think are the ones that have more defined features and you can't get more defined than dwarves. Definitely, definitely pick up some dwarven models. There's something about them that I just love. Probably anything from their, their cheeks all the way to their upper brow. They're just very Chad-like. If you look at memes of a Chad kind of face, it's something that makes it really easy. So if you have a more of a round face like this, you're definitely, you've gotten the practice in. There we go. And a lot of the skin tones is just going to be trial and error. If you really want someone that has a really good understanding of flesh tones and layering, and they can go at a really good pace so you can keep up and start to really understand the skin tones is Serastro because I, I, I was really getting into painting Crisis Protocol miniatures for a while because they have really good sculpted miniatures and a lot of people that are interested in painting them so you find really good tutorials online. Okay, so now um, I've got a little bit more of that to near yellow. And I'm gonna switch brushes 
switching jobs, if, as it were. And my more detailed brush is going to pick out some of these other areas. And I'm also using my thumb as kind of a palette to check a couple things. I want to see the tone as it's transitioning there. So if I got to add a, just a little bit more darker to make sure that the contrast is not too wild, the transition of colors. But then I can also see just what that ratio looks like. And this comes off super easily. So. If you want to wear a glove, go for it. I just use my hand there. Oh, and it also takes off some of the excess on that brush too, to the comfortable amount. Whatever you're comfortable with. All right. So right now I'm going to be poking out that upper brow. With the emphasis on that right side. Nose there. And that cheek to upper lip. Just a little bit of a dot on the left cheek too. All right, you see? All right. Now, also making sure that this back of the hand is keeping up with some of these transitions there. All right. I want to see what the golden skin looks like is in comparison to all this. Very bright. Okay, so. Now, top of the brow. See, now I'm kind of bringing in those highlighted areas. All right. Now, if it gets a little bit too contrasty and you're like, where am I going with this? You can go through and take one of your medium tones of skin there. Add your medium to it. So now it's All 
All right. You're gonna add your medium to your medium uh, tone of skin. And just go through like it was a contrast paint itself. Got some paint runaways here. There we go. Just so you can get that blending down. Perfect. All right. Now it looks a little weird just because of the shape of the hair in relation to the face. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint that up and see what you look what it looks like with the hair and the eyes. I'm gonna go holder blue and abyssal blue. That might be fun. She looks like she had, she would have like raven black hair and it's got kind of a, a coldish blue hue to it. Got a little 50-50 mix there. That holder blue is super translucent. So just painting it on a model, it could start to look like armor. So I'm adding a little uh, abyssal blue to anchor it. Make it just thick enough so it's a good base. And down in the comments, let me know exactly what's the most challenging part of the miniature for you. And maybe we can conquer that together. Because there's a lot of techniques and things that may seem really difficult at first, but there might be a little trick to it. Do you have a lot of players that add a lot of detail to your miniatures? Do you paint your pl your players' miniatures as uh, DMs? I often start to, I find myself kit bashing a lot of the miniatures that I have for my players, which I think is super fun. We should probably have like a session of that as a video and shows some of the kit bashing you could do with like Warhammer and D and D like frameworks models. That's all really fun as well. Cause they offer a lot of different little accessories, things that you can customize your model. All really fun stuff. 
All right, looking pretty good as a base tone for the hair. And now once you see the, the eyes that are poking through here, to make it look less asleep, I'm gonna take my detail brush. Get this ready, it should have been ready, but I'm adding it now. I'm taking white sand, so it's a, an off white color there. Taking my detail brush, make sure the, the water is all nice and clear before you try to paint with a white because it could change that tone dramatically. All right, so I've got my white here. Okay, there's one. There's two. Just cleaning it up some so the white is just over the eyeball there. And to really clean it up, all you gotta do is go in with some of your darker skin tones and you can go just around that eye. Just kind of help fill in the, the spots where the, the white transferred a little too hard. Just like that. All right. And then from here, if you're actually wanting to add some pupils to it, you would go with an off brown or uh, black, and I'd go into possibly darker brown, the uh, dark leather or dryad bark from Citadel would do really nicely. And you're just really carefully adding a dot right there and a dot right there and in a downward stroke, just barely though. And then again, you can fill in those, those areas around the eye to really clean up the model. But I'm going for more of a glowy effect. It's one of my favorite eye cheats, is that their eyes are glowing, they're powerful. Some sort of powerful spellcaster being shenanigans going on. But I'm just making sure that those eyes are completely dry before I add my contrast to it because it'll blur those things. Okay. And check this out. Ooh, Tesseract Glow. Probably shouldn't be playing with it though. These have the tendency to get flipped over and cause a huge, huge mess. So be careful. There are little holders that Citadel offers as well for all the contrast paint and a lot of the shades that they have. Definitely check those out. Definitely, definitely. You don't want to get this on the carpet or anything like that, so be careful where you're painting as well. All right. So now the eyes are tinted green, and I can add a couple more layers to really make that stand out. All right. Now, the other way of painting flesh. Let's see, I do have another model. 
just to show you uh, some of those features. More elven, more uh, of a sharp featured of face here. What I can go ahead and do is find my medium tone that I really want to go with. I'm gonna go with pink flesh. Okay. And as I go with pink flesh, again, really gonna go with like a three quarter ratio of paint to water or medium. Once it's nice and light and you're happy with the tone, you can just start to apply that on the model. And depending on how you base your miniatures, you might need a couple of coats of this. Because like I said, it's really light, but it's really going to bring out those features. If you over paint or put too much material on the model, it can really detract from a lot of those details such as how sharp those cheeks really are and there's other little details that the uh, the sculptor wanted you to find All right. All right. Gotta get the ears as well. And part of what makes painting so fun is the experimentation seeing how different colors uh, work with one another, seeing how many layers you need for certain paints. It is really fun. All right, we're letting that dry. All right. Now I want to try something. I'm going to experiment here. Because now once the eyes are green like that, I'm going to poke out a couple of the pupils here. So now it looks like it's really glowing. Like she's reaching level 20 here. All right, and there you go. So once you paint out some of the rest of the model, you'll really see all these details that we just picked out are really gonna stand out. 
and contrast nicely with the rest of the ensemble. Once we get the, the glow of the skull going here, you'll be able to see just after that, you'll be able to see all of the special effects style of painting that we're going to apply to the miniature through glowing effects of green on different areas of the skin. So stay tuned for that. Until then, this is Clay from Merlin's Vault, and I'll see you next time. Peace.